Meanwhile, it is round two for Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump tonight. The pressure is on for the Republican nominee in tonight's uh, debate, certainly. Trump comes into the matchup with eroding support from his own party following his latest controversy. The turmoil possibly adding to the unpredictable nature that already surrounds a town hall style format of tonight's face-off. Joining me right now are the two uh, chairmen of the debate commission, Mike McCurry and Frank Farenkoff, co-chairman for the Commission on Presidential Debates. Gentlemen, thanks very much for joining us. We appreciate it. Uh, glad to be here. I should point out nice that Mr. McCurry is, is also uh, a, a, the former press secretary to President Clinton. Gentlemen, it is good to have you, and obviously the uh, interest in tonight's debate could not be higher. Uh, than it is right now. Let me ask you about the town hall format and why this format was chosen. Frank, kick us off here in terms of town hall versus one on one or one on two moderator style. Well, it's, it's also a change from town hall in the past, Maria, because uh, previously we would have normally about 100 people from the statistical marketing area, the St. Louis area, that would be in bleachers. We felt that that was getting a little stale, and so what we've done this time is we sort of cut it in half. So we're only going to have about 40 people on stage who will have the ability to ask questions. We have two moderators, as you know, Anderson Cooper uh, and Martha Raddatz, and they, for half of the debate, they're going to balance it, will also be asking questions that have come in through social media or they themselves have selected uh, questions. And it's to see the candidates in another environment rather than just standing behind podiums. We've had a town hall meeting since 92. That's when it was first put in place, uh, and we've kept it every cycle since. But Maria, let me, let me make one point, uh, one point on, the, on this format, too. You know, we do, in the off years when there are no presidential debates here, our staff goes around the world to help consult with other countries. And one thing that they say over and over again is they think it's remarkable that in the American democratic system we have average citizens standing up and questioning our leaders. That doesn't happen in a lot of countries. And so that's another important aspect of this town hall format. How do you make sure that the debate doesn't get dominated uh, by sort of the news of the day? I mean, obviously tonight, and I know you gentlemen are not going to weigh in on this latest controversy around Donald Trump or around Hillary Clinton, but how do you ensure that, in fact, the questions that the American people want answered are looked at? For example, immigration, you know, vetting at our borders, jobs, and, uh, and the economy and economic growth. How does it not get dominated by what Donald Trump said uh, on a tape 11 years ago? Well, I, I'll take a crack at that. You know, it's our two moderators, Anderson Cooper and Martha Raddatz. They, they control the questions, and they get to decide who, get, who gets to ask what. Now, the, the other point is that we've got real American citizens that are there on the stage asking questions. And I think it's much more likely that they're going to talk about and ask about the things that are on their mind, immigration, economic policy, trade, as you were just talking about with Gene, uh, you know, issues that really are on the minds of the American people. They, yes, the media is you know, currently consumed in the frenzy over some of the uh, issues that have erupted in the last couple of days. But, you know, it'll be up to these citizens and then the moderators who actually pick the questions and they'll get to a chance to kind of talk to these town hall participants, find out what's on their mind, right. and then they get to select from that what, what are we going to re really talk about at this debate tonight, and hopefully it'll be a lot more than just what the current controversy of the day is. How are the moderators chosen? Well, that's what, one of the hardest things we have to do, Maria. We, 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 we watch a, a great deal of television because we pretty much decided over the years that we've got to go to the electronic media, although we may make some changes in, 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 the, in the future for people who are used to working with this in their ear because the, the moderator is, you know, has a, a connect with the producer off stage, has to keep time. We also watch to make sure that we're not talking about someone who's biased one way or the other. We try to find people who are going to go right down the middle. It's a very, very difficult thing for us to do. We also look for diversity and we, we were, we're actually quite proud of, of the people that we came up with uh, in this uh, series of debates. Uh, but it's, it's a very, very hard decision because normally what happens, whoever thinks maybe they lost the debate, they blame it on the moderator. So right. you've got to have a lot of, a lot of gumption to, to do this. It's not easy. Did, did both campaigns have to weigh in and, and give an okay to each moderator? 
No, no, we we are very clear about that. They right. uh, uh, do not get a chance to vet the moderators. We we use our best judgment, and then we basically advise the campaigns that this mm. is who we're, uh, we've selected and that we're going with. That's I a mean, change that's really quick, come about. It used to be a, there used to be a debate over the bait. Remember, Maria, for yeah. a long time. We picked the dates, we picked the locations, we picked the format, and we picked the the moderators without consultation. Will Will the moderators know what the audience wants to ask? In other words, will the moderators see the questions in advance? And, and of course, will the candidates see the questions in advance? No. Well, they, they need to, and they will have an opportunity to get to know the uh, 40 citizens that will be sitting there on stage today. They'll have a good idea of what kinds of questions that they want to ask yes, the moderators, the moderators. Right. not the candidates. And of course. the campaigns, the candidates, and we on the commission will have no idea what's being asked. And then, of course, they will also be screening some of the questions coming in from social media, from Facebook, who's one of our partners. Uh, in this debate, Twitter, other uh, social media sites. So they will know what kinds of questions they want to do, but it's up to the moderators to work that into the program. They, they've got an extraordinarily difficult uh, challenge. I think mm. even more so than Lester Holt and then your colleague Chris Wallace, who will moderate the third debate, this one is probably technically a lot more challenging. So we've given them a very hard assignment. Yeah, well, congratulations to the both of you. It's going to be widely watched. Uh, we will be there and, and talking about it uh, the next day. General, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thanks, Maria. Thank you. We will see you soon.